overall, I thought uh, we battled about as hard as we could and uh, very proud of the way we played. Uh, Duke is a tremendous team, uh, but I, I thought we did some things that were, were really good. And, uh, you know, we think Tyus will be back at practice probably Saturday. What people were commentating at halftime, um, I talked to Frank, I looked at the video, there was no trip involved out there. I don't know who was talking about that, but it was a bump, and both guys said, that's it. You know, there was nothing there. Trying to manufacture something out of nothing. We're capable of playing with anybody. We proved that tonight without Tyus. You know, Buddy's played well. I mean, all he did was extrapolate what he's been doing. He's been playing 14 minutes in the league and averaging eight points a game. And in these two games, you know, he played 34 minutes and, you know, he got he averaging 16 or 17, which is exactly what he should do. Uh, nah, I mean, uh, I was just showing the video on the way out here. But, uh, I mean, if you're saying I'm trying to trip him, uh, I don't get it. Uh, I saw the play. I, I realized I tripped him, and I tried to, you know, give him a little hand. At the same time, I'm in, I'm in the heat of the game with a very tough defender on me. Um, you know, I was trying to get open, get the ball, you know, get the ball out fast. That's all I really remember of the play. I, I, I just saw the video really quick. But, uh, you know, he, he, he's a hell of an athlete, a hell of a player. You know, I have a lot of respect for him. You know, I, I'm not going to wait four years to get to this stage to start tripping people. It's a joke. Welcome to the Q's Militia Podcast with those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. All right, what's up, Q's Nation? Thanks for tuning in to the Q's Militia Podcast with Sean and Joe. If you like it, please subscribe. The universal handle for the socials is at Q's Militia. Go there, join the militia. We are the only Syracuse sports podcast centered around giving you the fans a voice. While the Orange lose in the quarterfinals of the ACC tournament to Duke, but it was not for a lack of effort. Syracuse, uh, led by none other than Frank Howard Scratch and clawed their way back late in the first half. After being down 17, you'll hear from us. We'll hear from you in the fan feedback. And uh, we hurry up and wait to see where we'll end up and who will play after Selection Sunday. But first, as always, if you're looking for 5% off tickets, it just so happens that I have a deal for you. TickSplits is the official ticket provider of the Armchair Media Network, and unlike other ticketing providers that sneak in the extra fees and unexplained service charges at TickSplits, the price you see is the price you pay. Unnecessary fees should not prevent you from seeing the sporting event concert of your choosing. Go to TickSplits and enter the promo code Armchair at checkout to receive that 5% off your total ticket purchase. That's T-I-X-B-L-I-T-Z dot com. Promo code Armchair. TickSplits. Guaranteed seats. Guaranteed emotions. Syracuse, two games and two nights uh, without Tyus Battle. I yeah. feel like they they honestly surprised me, and I'm yep. I am I am not surprised that players stepped up. I am surprised by how well they did in both of those games without Tyus Battle, and it's just kind of funny to me that Howard just played that well in those two games, um, you know, while Tyus Battle sitting on the bench. And it just goes to show how much this team relies on on, on Tyus Battle, in my opinion. That's what I got from <laughs> Relied. Relied. Yeah, what did I say? No, you said relies, but I mean, oh, it's more right. or less, you're, I'm, I'm putting in past tense and right, hoping right, that they right. leave that there. You <laughs> exactly. Know? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> usually, usually when you... S- Correct me. I think I did something wrong. You, you, you've oh, given no, me a complex, no. Joe. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that they they realize now that they don't need to do to, – to, to rely on, on Tyus like that. And they're obviously yeah. fully capable, fully capable of giving any team in the country hell because they did it against arguably the best team in the nation against Duke in yeah. the ACT tournament quarterfinals. So the Orange played two games in two nights, as I mentioned. Tyus Battle, um, without Tyus Battle, just maybe 
this is what the team needed, especially Howard uh, needed this boost of confidence heading into the NCAA tournament. Uh, and where has this leadership been from Frank? It's been a hot topic of discussion all year, um, that you know, especially on this show. Uh, but without Tyus Battle, the Orange played like a team for two consecutive games in a row. They averaged 45.7% from the field, 43.6% from distance, and they still suck at free throws. <laughs> Not a yeah. shocker. 65.2% from the line. All those percentages are from the two games combined. Um, so Frank, yeah. in the two ACC tournament games, he shot 50% and he racked up 46 points in two games. Buddy racked up 35 points in two games. He went 50% from distance, 9 for 18. Those two guys stood out to me uh, the most, a freshman and a senior, and I just love that. I, I do. I you know, yeah. One going, one coming in, and you know you see the old blood and new blood. Uh, the, the quarterfinal game against Duke uh, could have easily been a blowout, in my opinion. And I can't stress it enough that despite the loss, and I know there are no moral victories, but I'm I'm extremely proud of the way this team played and the way they responded to being down by 17 points in the, the middle of the, the first half and coming back. Um, the difference, obviously, in that game against Duke was Zion Williamson because, in my opinion, one of two things, Duke doesn't win without Zion, and Duke may not win if Tyus is in. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you don't never know, but that's my opinion. Uh, the Orange yeah. Royale rebound. 38 to 27. Duke tallied 27 points off of 17 Q's turnovers. Now, uh, we'll talk about the game, but that wasn't the story of the night. Uh, they made a mountain out of a molehill. It was the alleged tripping of Zion by Howard that was blown completely out of proportion. Uh, it made my eyes bleed. So, uh, mm-hmm. uh, quickly, Joe, um, let's, let's talk about the trip. We'll talk about Pitt, and then we'll get into Duke. Um, but you know, this was a play that honestly, I didn't even, uh, realize had happened until right. halftime. And I was wondering, I was wondering to myself, did it, did it happen, you know, right before the half? I had no idea. So right. did you notice it at first? No. Or you didn't either. Mm-mm. No one, none of the broadcasters I mean, said I think, anything. I, I think that. I remember noticing him stumble? stumble a little bit, but that happens throughout the games. Uh, especially, I mean, hard fought game like that. They were all over the court. There was a bunch of little scrums and scrambles. There's a lot of turnovers. So yeah, there was a ton. Um, it really didn't. I, I mean, I briefly remember him, you know, kind of stumbling, but I don't remember seeing, you know, the footage that they showed or even remember any, even the people, uh, Jay Billis or McDonough, the, the callers of the game, even saying anything about it during it either. So, yeah, like you said, it was a surprise. It was, and and yeah, I, love, I, I love how they slow the footage down every time they showed it. They slow oh, it down. Yeah. It looks bad when you slow it down, but at real speed, Joe, it's like – it looks like a normal move. Right. And the problem is, is most of the time in normal speed, if it's egregious or it's bad in normal speed, it's still egregious or bad. Absolutely, so, sure. You know, yeah. that O'Shea Brissett elbow that I think we talked right. about and got away with. Yeah. Uh, that looked bad, it did. slow and fast. It didn't right, matter. exactly. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's my point. We've been objective, right? Yeah, we, I think we, so. We oh I I believe I mean I tend to be a little bit more biased, but I I talked to you on the phone about the about the Brissett thing and I was pissed because of Jay Williams. I've learned to really just think Jay Williams is a douchebag, but um, <laughs> uh, and I'll well, tell you and, and, he's and, a dookie. Huh? Yeah, I know. But um, after I really watched the Brissett deal, I was, I was a, I could, I'm not an idiot. I mean, that was a little egregious. I mean, he, he swung it back. But the whole thing with Frank Howard was terrible. But anyways, Jay Williams, he came unhinged at halftime like a lunatic, and uh, you know he did it before against Brissett. But um, there was a Twitter account called at old old takes freezing cold takes. I followed them because of this. But freezing cold takes, they're verified. Never heard of them before. But right. they put something together before the game even ended, and here it is. There is no place in the game for stuff like this. I said the same thing when the Grace and Allen stuff happened a couple years ago. The same thing just happened there with Frank Howard. We have the replay. You see that straight up. There is no place in the game for that. No place in the game for that. It's it, it, uncalled for. 
And I wish we could go back because that's a play that where I feel like players need to get I, I injured. I think when I look at Grayson as an NBA player, I, I, I think he translates a little bit differently. I think he can be a good NBA player. I mean, get there. I kind of like, the, you know what, I'm over it. I like the fact that he trips people. Why not? Be a villain. Enjoy it. Like, I'm not saying it's right. But I, I will say sometimes there's a tendency to overreact because as a Duke player, you're always hated against. People yeah. are always telling you that you're soft. You're a choir boy. So sometimes you want to prove to people, like, no, like, I'm from not a great area. Like, I can play basketball just like anybody else. Yeah, okay. Jay Williams, moral imposter. You know, what <laughs> What a, what a fool. You know, I can't even take that guy serious anymore. And I just had to play that. I want to, I want to thank whoever put that put that whole thing together but um yeah, that's yeah i mean you don't uh sometimes i guess have you I heard know. that joe did you listen to that before no i didn't that's the first time of me okay. listening to it i didn't really pay too much attention to it i thought you know obviously thinking about it i was like well that's funny coming from a dookie and you know with grace and allen but mm-hmm. i never really, i don't remember everything that was said about him and obviously he doesn't either because i don't see how you can say that <laughs> With a straight face, if you knowingly know that you said something like that, he so was either, emphatic. Yeah, no, he must be a either he misremembered or, like you said, you just you get to the point where you just are on TV so much you forget what you say. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, that was, you got to be careful when stuff like this happens because you got people like this on the sideline just waiting for somebody to say the wrong thing just so they can come back and kind of, you know. Just waiting for you to slip up. And, I mean, this was a long time ago, though, Joe. Trip this, up. This, <laughs> this, yeah, exactly. This was a long time ago, Joe. This is all the way back. I don't know if you're old if you're old enough to remember all the way back to 2017. But that's what no. you said that. Too. That was oh, wow. a, that was a long time ago. So I don't, I don't know, know how much I was following basketball back then. But, but. <laughs> either way, I don't believe I don't believe it was intentional, and no. maybe who knows? At the very least, if it, if it was, I don't know. Nothing happened. Again, it's a moot point. It's exactly it is. It's I don't know. I think especially coming a, from him after his comments. Well, you can say coming from him. I know it came from other other people too. I heard little things that didn't go as far as. Uh, Ejections I mean, and suspensions. Well, I, on ESPN two yesterday after our game or you know during halftime, I had changed it and they had talked about it. I don't know if it's the end of the game, but they were talking about it. But the the one guy, he kind of kept it, you know, like you said, objective and said, you know, he compared it to the Yo O'Shea Brissett thing, and he said that it really wasn't, you know, it's not comparable when you talk about the stuff the, what O'Shea Brissett, you know, got away with. So. Yeah, it's, again, it's true. that's the whole true. point. The whole point of it is, is he didn't fall. He didn't fall. He didn't get hurt. There was no fouls. There was it, it had zero effect on the game. But yet you have somebody coming out and instead of talking about, you know, obviously they didn't need to talk about how good Zion was doing anymore. But Jeez, instead, don't of, com- even instead of coming out and like you said earlier this afternoon, instead of coming out and talking about how Syracuse with shorthanded without Ty's battle down 17 comes back and, and gets it within six within distance right before half i mean i thought that was the most privacy that i thought there was two storylines in the be- in the first half sure, that, that was obvious that right. was supposed to be talked about and instead it was zion and the trip instead of zion and you know how and, hard our team was fighting to stay in the game yeah and you know frank howard at the end of the day scored scored t- i know zion had 14 rebounds to he had 28 to, yeah to uh to frank's two but frank had 28 points to zion's 29 so I mean, hey, look. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Look, I, I know he's a highlight reel. As... I know he's a highlight reel. I get it. I get it. We all get it. But it's not going to be a self pleasuring circle with everybody in sports media. That gets old. I'm sorry. It it, it got old quick last night, and I I muted the TV. But I'm just one of those people who's like, I can't mute the TV. I I want to know what's going on. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I I need to hear it. Yeah. So, but again, like when you're not a Duke fan, then it it's does tough. get tiresome. Oh, obviously, big time. obviously he's a good player. Obviously he was coming obviously. back. Yeah, sure. And he was having a historical night. I mean, 13 for 13, and what he pulled off. I mean, yeah, I get it. But still, uh, there's oh, they started whole... that whole deal before he went one for one. So. It's not no, it started there, and then he didn't miss a shot, and it just right. got worse and worse and worse. And <laughs> right. you know, it just totally, totally overlapped the point of just what was going on in the game and the other players. And because you know, Syracuse, like we know, and like we talked about, they surprised us. I thought they, with us, I can't speak for all the other fans, but I'm sure there's a real, real big oh, yeah. number out there where they probably thought that 
those two games weren't going to go like that without battle. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I was nervous about Pitt. And, and speaking of. I was too. Buddy Beheim, a career high, 20 points. Uh, just, he went on fight. He went on an 8-0 run to begin the second half on his own. And similar to Frank against Duke, Frank went on a 10-0 run to end the first half against Duke. But uh, in the Pitt game, Syracuse down by nine. And again, down by six at the half. And come out, and they just in the second half with that with that first run, the eight zero run led by Buddy. That's that was it. They just pulled away yep. from there. Yep. So it was impressive, and although I'll be at Pitt, uh, I don't think any of us really knew what we were gonna see. I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna have to be a more hard fought, grinded out game to win. That I did game. too. Neutral court, and you know, with Pitt, they've they've. I don't know if they've been on fire, but they've been decent coming down to the end of the regular season. And, you know. No, I mean, they we, we beat them twice. They're right, a rivalry. Too. Sure. They're in their, their it's pretty much a winner go home scenario for them. So it's their last, last lifeline. So I mean, that was knew, it for them. Yeah. Right. So that's why I thought that it was a situation where, especially without Tyus and the first time, couple of times we played them, they had those tough guards that played pretty good lockdown D I was nervous about a def- bunch of different things but um they definitely like I surprised me surprised me uh, they against su- Pitt they, they surprised me too and then they go in next day uh, you're wondering if Tyus is going to play maybe there's a possibility Tyus plays against Duke and you find out Tyus isn't playing against Duke and you're just like <sighs> oh come on I don't want this to be a massacre and then they go down by 17 and you're like you shot me a text. You're like, Ugh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. I thought it was the. You yeah, thought it was nights, the dagger, two right? Nights, two late nights in a row, and I thought it was going to be an early one, last one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but we, yeah, they kept it close enough for me to pretty much watch the whole game. So. Yeah, the Frank Howard you know. 10-0 run to end the, uh, to get it close within, uh, you know, whatever it was, it ended up being six at the first half, and yeah. then, um, you know. They tied it up. Buddy Beheim hit a three to tie it up with um, 46-46. And then they went on a they went on another they went on like a seven uh, two run. Duke went on a seven two run or something like that. And yeah. you know it was a struggle from there. But you know I'm really like like I said and I said I can't say it enough. So I'm just gonna say it again. For losing to Duke in the ACC tournament, this is probably the happiest I could be. I mean, not that no, I'm happy. There's the no moral victories. Yeah. But to see this way this team played, you know, I wonder what is going to happen in the tournament when Tyus is, is healthy. He's going to be – coach thinks he's going to be practicing Saturday and um, tomorrow. And, yeah. so, and so, you know. Overall, overall, I think that uh, – I mean, like we talked about, it's a good – I think it's a good thing. I think as fans and even the teammates, I think that we've been learning for the last two years that when it's – the tough shot or we need a basket or it's the end of the uh, shot clock, something like that. You know, we're down, we need a spark. And I think that there's just so m- everybody relies on, on Tyus to do it. Yeah. There's been so much weight on his shoulders to carry this team. And he's a great player, but it can't be like that. And you can't rely on one guy on your team. You just step right. up and do and, your and, thing. And, right. And, and the one thing that I liked was the fact that obviously he dressed, he was on the sidelines, um, for them saying that, you know, bruised hip, bruised elbow, and bruised back, I thought that he was, you know, standing up and sitting down pretty good. He was, you know, I mean, I, I was watching that in the first game just to see. He was doing hand motions. He was telling him, you know, go, 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 go get that. Yeah, I mean, he was he was helping as far as, yeah, he was he was being, you know, the little player coach on the, on the sideline. But I was talking about more or less like his mobility of standing up, sitting down. Oh, sure. Stuff. Good you sign. know, if it, yeah. if, it, if it was that bad, then he wouldn't be standing up, sitting down so easily or so much on the bench, you know. So yeah. he he was reacting to the game and he was in the game. And who knows? Maybe, obviously, I think this was something that our, our team needed without him because they needed to figure out well, who's going to step up. What yeah. can we do without him? You yeah. know, what? Well, now they know that they can do it with him too. Like even if he's out there, that means that there's another defender. Probably, I mean, he's going to draw the best defender. So now it's 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 he's he's there to make it easy, it's not for to, you to put all the yeah. weight on him. And you know, again, too, with Tyus, the, the amount of minutes he's played, and the, you know, the wear and tear he puts on his body, obviously. Uh, he probably could have went, I bet you, against Duke if he wanted to, but they want to get him healthy. They want to get him rest and uh, 
get ready for the tournament. And it, he's still just a, probably a little tender because it's only four or five days. So I think he's going to be fine for the tournament. But it, it might have – it's probably a learning situation for him too. I hope he was on the bench seeing what, is, what the players are capable of and hopefully he can get in their ear and let them know like, hey, why aren't you doing that when I'm out there? Do that. Do that, you know, and hopefully he can learn a little bit about it. Hopefully he learned a little bit about his teammates these past two games watching on the sidelines and maybe uh, hopefully – it can all just come together, uh, come the big dance, and then they can make a nice little run. Because if those, if he has a supporting cast like that, then I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, you know, obviously Frank took more shots, but he still went 50%. So, yeah. um, mm-hmm. I mean, it was just excellent. And let's not forget about Hughes against Pitt. He had 18. Brissett had two points in the first half against Duke. He came out in the second half. Well, he, he, he caught fire. He, he scored 12 yep. in the second half against Duke. So you've got everybody. you got your starters. Pascal Chuku against Pitt. We can't dismiss him against Pitt. No, no, that was a he great was, game. He was excellent. Um, nine rebounds, seven points. And he had a bunch six of blocks. Six or seven blocks, right? Yeah, six blocks. So And five offensive rebounds, by the way, from oh, Chuku yeah. against your Pitt. Your offensive rebounded really and good against Pitt. He, he, got, he got pretty much benched by his foul activity which mm. is questionable at times, and maybe it's his height. But it seemed like in the beginning of that Duke game especially, the the, the whistles were a little lopsided in the fact that the amount of contact Syracuse gave Duke and the amount of contact Duke gave Syracuse seemed like, you know, we were getting the light we were getting the light whistles and I don't I don't know. What yeah, what do you think? I... It's just so – it's tough because down there everything happens so fast with Zion. He's so big, and we have such small little guys as far as muscle-wise that uh, it's tough. It's tough to question. And sometimes the, the the ref gets the wrong guy. You know, I thought there was a couple times the call could have been called on somebody else. I thought there was an, another call that this was a no call. This shouldn't have been a no call. So, yeah, he got he kind of got strapped. And if you remember the, you know, the game that we played at Duke, he played really, really well. The one that we won, he played really, really well. The one we lost, he didn't. Right. And last night, uh, his foul, you know, foul trouble definitely took him out of out of the game. You know, but obviously having Brissett come out in the second half because Brissett really didn't do too much in against Pitt. They went a little bit smaller no, with the guards. Points, I they think. Were, yeah, well, they went a little smaller with the guards. The guards were playing well, and and I mean, I don't even think Brissett came in until what somebody fouled out. Or something. Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, no, no, then, it wasn't someone that fouled out. But you're right. I know what you're talking so, about. So, and then, and then, you know, obviously with Chuku being in foul trouble, that hurts uh, against Duke. So, um, but yeah, I mean, Brissett stepped up. I thought Dolge had some good plays and some bad plays. Uh, but again, I think with a physical down low team like that, especially with a guy like Zion and some of those other guys, then it just gives those guys problems. But uh, you know, it's just. With you, me the whole the, me the whole time and like you said it was just Zion 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 and all they're talking about oh is that and you look up and it's like dude it's, it's a three point game in the second half so it's a tie game like why are we only you know what I mean? I mean how how about we talk about how is Zion playing like this and Syracuse still in the game and I freaking I like Jay Billis as a broadcaster man and, and he just would mm-hmm. not shut up he was relentless oh, that, was the hot, that was the hot topic I you know, get I think, it what is the, what did the margin us- orders come down from corporate hey just talk about Zion that's it because that's all the replays they played coming in and going out of commercial so I mean whatever it's a it was Dude. annoying it was so annoying I hey, just, man. I couldn't handle it the self you know what it's about circle. bro it's about the it's about money the- brother that's what yes, it's sir. About. <laughs> all right all so about the Benjamins that's it you want to hear from fans we've rambled enough Yes, sir. All right. It's time to hear from you. The loud mouths from the loud house. The best damn college sports fans in the nation. All right, y'all know where to go. At Cuse Militia on Facebook and Twitter. I propose the question at the end of every game. I shouldn't say every game because I didn't for Pitt, but I knew we weren't going to be doing fan feedback for Pitt. So right. I, that is the only game I skipped this year. But um, you go there. I provoke your thoughts. You give your thoughts, and then we 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 pick some of them and we talk about them here on the show. Now, of course, what? of course, yes. Now, of course, there's regulars. Of course, there is because the regulars that get on the show say awesome things that I like to repeat, and <laughs> so that's why that happens. So get on there. There's always a new guy here and there, though, uh, like Bob, like Bob. Bob's a new guy. 
And hey, Bob, Bob. Bob says, nice comeback to make a game out of it. No answer or way to stop Zion. Well, there was five games Zion didn't play. This team was pumped up, and that's what scared me the most. And he was on fire. So what do you do? <laughs> nothing. There's nothing <laughs> what obvious you, what that you, you could do? do. What do you do? The bottom line is that one player usually can't beat you. So, But right. I think that the player we needed last night, we didn't have. So Exactly. It's been an enigma with this whole Duke-Syracuse thing this year because we haven't been able to... We haven't had full. We, we neither, neither neither team's been fully healthy when we have played each other. Right, so yeah, right, 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 right. And there's been some good games, and obviously we won at Duke. So yeah, huh? Yeah, and Bob, nice comeback. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Who would have thought we'd have come back from 17 to cut it to six before the half, and then tie it with a Buddy Beheim three? So that was <laughs> not awesome. this guy. Yeah, you know, I was, I was. I was freaking, I was getting a little upset. Christopher James, you have to be generally pleased with that performance. Cuse hung in this game without battle, and it forced Frank to lead this team. If this Frank shows up in the tournament and we have Pascal play like he did against Pitt, this team will be scary. I saw Frank drive it tonight much more than he has all season. I think he can drive more, but... Then again, he's shooting the ball very well. This team looks like it could be another scary team in March. I'm excited. Go Cuse. Christopher James. That's yes, the stuff I like to hear right there. You just freaking encapsulated that uh, very well. And, yeah, Frank was driving to the rim finally. And where the hell has that been? He said in the press conference, if you didn't hear it, he said that, you know, he's finally getting into shape and uh, getting confident. But I think he was forced to. And when he realized he was forced to do it, and he did it because he was forced to, that he mm-hmm. can. Right? Yep. So I, I mean, think the same exact thing. That's my thoughts on Frank Howard. Uh, Robert says, a lot of heart. This team could be dangerous in the tournament. Yes. Um, we talked about um, uh, Tony Staffieri had said he, did, he was losing confidence in the tournament stuff. And I said something along the lines of, I'm, I lose confidence more in, in basically conference play because it's so tough, but the tournament yeah. is another animal to me, I feel like. And, yeah. and these teams, I don't know if they can prepare. And we don't know what team we're going to get next. This is the evolution of Syracuse basketball right now. We don't know what team we're going to get going into the NCAA tournament with a healthy battle coming off of these two games where yeah. Frank Howard's led the team. You know, It's going to yeah. be interesting to see. It's been, I think, I mean, we've seen this all year, though. I mean, that's from Frank Howard not playing from the beginning. And I mean, look at how we were talking. Well, you were talking about Juku earlier in the year. And now <laughs> he's somebody that's almost, you know, relied upon. How, you have when's to the last have time, him. When's the last time that we talked about, you know, Chuku like he shouldn't be playing or he wasn't playing earlier in the season? He wasn't playing good enough to garner the time. No, you know, he wasn't. Just, he sat during just, Clemson the first time we played him, remember? Yeah. And that started in non conference against teams that are undersized. Yeah. So something lit a fire. And again, like I said, it's it's all these players seeing what they can do without Tyus Battle. Uh hopefully it just elevates them. Um it's still finding out the roles. I'm also hoping that this doesn't because the one thing that I do question is that maybe a little bit of the struggle is the rotation. Is the, well, you know, is people feeling some sort of way because he's playing his kid? Or, you know, Frank Howard's getting pulled real quick when he makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that started a little bit early this year. And last year he got to, you know, you saw what he had to do when, or you saw what he did when he couldn't come out. So, again, that was just one of those things where it went against you and you just didn't know. And we've talked about Frank Howard getting in these moods sometimes when he gets pulled and stuff. But hopefully these last couple games – can open up his eyes to what kind of player Buddy is too, and he can understand when he comes in for him. I mean, you Buddy, know? it'd be one thing if the coach's son sucked, but the coach's son <laughs> does not suck. So. No, exactly. Right. <laughs> so, so at some point, you got to give credit where credit's due and understand that the kid's playing for a reason, and uh, that you're not going to play every minute. It's just not in. It's not in the cards. Not when you turn the ball over. Yeah. Well, no, and then make mistakes, and on top of that, you want to keep people fresh. So yeah, it was nice last year when you could play thirty-eight minutes, uh, but you know this year it's not the same. So yeah, we have a a mistake. You're coming out. That's right. Alex says uh, Frank finally took a leadership role, probably because Battle being out. Hopefully, he can play this way when Battle is back. 
Chuku five fouls in seven minutes of playing. That's got to be a record. That yeah. that probably is some kind of record, actually. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Chuku with the fouls. First of all, on, on, on the Chuku end, and I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I don't think Chuku commits all those fouls, but I mean, whatever. What are you going to do? Uh, and I, I hope Frank has the confidence to play the way he did last night. With with and and you know the other thing is too is is his teammates having confidence in him to do it too, that always yeah. that always helps. So mm-hmm. uh, Christopher says great game, good confidence booster going into turning without battle playing. Hate Bill is calling the game though. Christopher, I, I'm with you on that game, but I normally love Billis. My brother's a Duke fan. My brother grew up in Syracuse along with me. My brother still lives in Syracuse, became a Duke fan to just piss everybody off in my house. But mm-hmm. um he, he does. He's not even a big fan of Billis, and I always stick up for Billis with my brother. I'm like, I love Billis, but last night yeah. he was too much for me. Last night, bro, too he much. Was too much for a lot of people, I'm sure. Holy More than just cow. Syracuse fans too. Is he getting, nobody getting back? likes to, huh? Jeez, crow. Uh, yeah. Matthew says Chuku isn't allowed to have two good games in a row, but it <laughs> looks like he'll be a solid starter next year. Absolutely. Uh, Who? Can, huh? What do you say? He Who said, looks "Buddy, like? Buddy looks oh. like he'll be a solid starter next year. Uh, mm-hmm. Can't expect to win when Frank turns it over six times. Well, yeah, I mean, it was a little much, but he was handling the ball way more than he has all season. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. You know, it's kind of I don't know. If you uh, look at uh, time of possession with him and how much he had to do, then sometimes that's just there's going to be turnovers. Yeah, so. I know. I know six is high, but it's not been his role." Um, especially yeah, my when, biggest thing is wipe your damn hands off, man. <laughs> How many times the ball, at least three, at least goes three right times through his ball fingers, ball. right through his hands. Oh no. He would go to, to, uh, shoot or go to stop and do something with the ball. I mean, the, you know, the speed of him moving his hands and then stopping or something the ball like keep the going. ball was slipped out of the hands. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was just, there was some frustrating plays, you know, especially near the end there where he got that rebound where they got that rebound and he turned to go run and then it got stolen and it got and one. And that was like our kind of la- final kind of last push type thing. So there were some frustrating things, but overall you can't be, you can't be mad. No, I'm no, I'm not, I don't, I can't nitpick Frank's Frank's, um, play the Dude, past stop two being games. mad. Yeah, don't be mad. Stop man. being mad. No, but here, you. here, here oh, I'm not mad. Matthew, <laughs> Matthew goes on, and this is why I chose Matthew's comment. Considering Kansas allegedly, allegedly, allegedly tried to get Zion secured with some payments, I wonder what Coach K paid, and how long we'll have to wait for some wins to be vacated. Ooh, I don't know. That's conspiratorial. I love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's paying him with the national championship. Hey, Joe, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I mean, that's no one he, wants that's to hear he, that crap. I know that, but I'm saying that's what he promised them. He brought in a recruiting class where he had the number one, number two, and number three recruits in the class, and Trey Jones was another top ten guy. So that's why he came to Duke, not because of money. Yeah, well, Besides, obviously. Obviously, already, Coach K doesn't need money to bring guys to Duke, you know? No, and plus, plus Coach K knew that he was going to bust through his shoe and he was going to end up getting a – Huge, huge, huge contract once he goes to the NBA. So. Yeah, and he's going to kick it back to going to kick it back to Coach K. Uh, oh, I'm sure. At Joe Pasek, 44, Jay Billis was so far up Zion's ass that if Jay spit, it was coming out of Zion's mouth. That's really gross. Oh, That's nasty, yeah. Joe. Uh, well, that being said, they played well after a sluggish start. Uh, good D forcing turnovers. That's right, forced 18 turnovers. Let's keep it up and surprise some folks in the big dance. Absolutely, Joe. Yeah, force 18 turnovers, and I just wish that we didn't uh, have 17. <laughs> Otherwise, in, in what was what did I say at the beginning of the show? Uh, 27 points off Duke scored off of our 17 turnovers. So, oh yeah. Uh, so that was that was the NBA, NBA Jam portion of the game. Yeah. We know, which turned Joe. into all the highlights, which turned into all we the know. Zion talk. Yeah, I know. Which turned into everyone kind of being like, okay, what's going on? At one, Kev Nash. I thought, uh, this last se- I thought this last season, but I'm convinced now. Frank plays better when he knows he can't be taken out of the game. He was aggressive, taking it to the hole, not just threes. Hashtag go Q's. He, I mean, he might have a point. Especially if he's... Uh, that- I'm, I'm right there with him. Uh, that's kind of what I was saying earlier about you know comparing last year and this year. 
because last year he was allowed to make to make mistakes. Yeah, he was at, he was allowed uh, to play through them. Maybe he wasn't walking on eggshells. You know what I mean? Maybe he yeah. feels like he's walking on eggshells. He's just too timid, and he's yeah. not in his. And he's and he's the type of right. And when you see his, I like I kind of watch the way that his his body language, and you know sometimes he you well he used to get mad and he used to you know make a dumb foul or he make a stupid play, but now it seems like he just gets mad. So and, and, yeah. and it started last year too, when he missed a shot or when he made a mistake. Instead of playing and making a stupid play, a lot of times he'd come back and he'd hit a shot. And you can't really do that if you're going to get taken out if you make a mistake. So um, I can see kind of how he's been a little frustrated. But if you have options, you have options. So it's just one of those things where, you know, Frank Howard, he takes chances, you know, plays a little loose sometimes. And with that comes turnovers and, and mistakes. But uh, he makes up for him or he tends to make up for him when well, he, he has the time has, to do it instead of doing it sitting on the bench. So he definitely has the potential to make up for him without a doubt. We've, we've seen that we've wondered where Ben and maybe, uh, right. Maybe, but as a coach, what do you do? Well, you pull him. You have options on the bench. Yeah. He's absolutely. making mistakes, yeah. maybe doing some stuff sure, that you, you told him not him in to there. do. Yeah, absolutely. No, I get it. Totally. So it's a catch 22. It you is. never know. It is. It Cause is. what do you do? Keep him in and hope he makes up for it while you keep an, an, another option like buddy on the bench. It's, it's, it's tough. I mean, that's Buddy why, gets the hot hand. That's why coaching hand, ain't man. easy, bro. <laughs> and coaching ain't easy. Uh, yeah, and if Buddy gets the hot hand, like you said, uh, I mean, him and Howard, I think they both had their own little eight zero runs yesterday. They, y- y- uh, or at least in, in, in each game, a separate game. Buddy had right. one against Pittsburgh. Frank had one last night. Frank's was ten zero. Mm. Yeah. Uh, against, That's right. against Duke. Uh, at Tony Q's 44, played their hearts out and couldn't ask for much more considering battle was out. They were in it the whole game until under four minutes. Kept uh, Keep that high-level play up and add in battle and will be a nightmare for a few teams in the dance. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're hoping, right, Joe? That's the, optimi- the optimistic outlook going into the NCAA tournament is that uh, Syracuse can can click with everybody once battle comes back. No, that's that's been the outlook since the first tournament that we made since we went on sanctions and we got, you know, we self-imposed ourselves, everything like that. That very next year with Benajay and them, you know, that's when we barely got in as a 10 seed. We beat Virginia and went on that little run. And we've kind of been bubble bound in this whole, you know, Joe Lenardi Syracuse thing every year. And we, ne- we never know what we're going to do. Uh, you know, there's another year we didn't get in with Gillen and them. And we beat Duke that year, too. So um, there's a lot of, as a Syracuse fan, since we've been on these sanctions and we've came back and and from the self-imposing and the scholarships and all that, I think that we've kind of been used to that. And I mean, I, like I talked to you about it and it's been, I've kind of had the mentality since then. of just kind of, we just got to get in. Because we've yeah. proved, proved a 10 seed and we've proved in a couple of these tournaments that we can make runs. You know, last year is a playing game. So uh, people can say what they want when we might not have been firmly in before. And again, I think this year we're a lot more firmly in than last year as far as not worrying about it. But either Unless way. Unless you're Doug Gottlieb because he's a moron. But anyway. <laughs> either way. <laughs> either way, like I said, we know – what we have, we talked about it. We knew the talent coming back. And I mean, I wouldn't want to be a one seed next to our eight or nine. I fear next the, to our name with the, eight chance, or nine. the chances of us playing a one seed may come out of our conference. That's what sucks. Well, that's what I hope they don't set up for, because usually what they, they try to do their best to make it to where you don't play someone from your conference the first couple of rounds. Sometimes there's really just nothing you can do, especially when your conference is the ACC and it's the best in the nation. It's the most competitive, um, yeah. most we talented hope conference that in we, the nation. Yeah, we just got to hope that we don't get three teams as one seeds. Because <laughs> then that'll be an issue. Because well, well, Virginia I mean, Vir- lost to, uh, just a minute ago. So. Vir- yeah, Virginia lost to Florida State, but they're they're locked in as a one seed. Yeah, I know. Um, and wah, then wah. again, I think probably the team that wins tonight between Duke and North Carolina is probably going to get the other number one seed. Yeah, but the other teams aren't helping themselves. I know. Uh, LSU lost to Florida today. Gonzaga lost in their conference championship against St. Mary's. So who knows how far they're going to fall. And really, the the only other one seeds that you have out there that's even close is Kentucky and Tennessee. That's even close to those teams. And if they end up losing in their conference tournament, then who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, you know, as much as I like to see our our conference show up, 
you know, you just ugh, be an eight nine seed. That sucks. But anyway. Oh yeah, definitely. At if not now when eighty four gets me every time. I have to say it slow. Duke put <laughs> Duke Duke paid the refs. Uh, we didn't have Tyus. Frank played awesome. Zion travels or fouls every time he touches the ball. Mm-hmm. I hate Duke so much. Now, well, Mike, look, Zion does travel or foul almost every time he touches the ball. He does. He fouls all the time, that guy. They just don't call it. We talked about this the last time they played, or the first time they played this year. That guy fouls all the time. They never call it. No, it's, it that's true. What you I don't know about paying the refs. Is. It's, yeah, exactly. I mean, this, the bottom line is when you have that type of physical specimen going against the type of physical specimens that we have in the bottom line, sometimes it looks a lot worse than what it really is. I mean, you saw some of those offensive rebounds last night. It looked like he was kind of just tossing them to the side with just one hand, a couple fingers. Just, yeah, that's and a foul. And they just was going up. That's a foul. Uh, it's a foul. Why? Because dolajai has got to put some leg into it that's different? The, th- the problem is, is that he barely has to, I mean, he's barely doing anything. There's a lot of times where people use swim moves, get their arm, their body in front of somebody. He's just using fingers I, I, to get I, these guys. I, I mean, it's just, get it. it's bad. I get it. Let's just say this, Mike. Let's just say this. <laughs> you just this, hate Duke and Zion so bad. I love Zion. <laughs> Actually, I do. But. Really? Of course. I mean, how could you not? I mean, I don't love him like freaking want to see him do good. No, I want to see him fail. But. I think us. I give him right. Well, no, I want to see him fail tonight against UNC. <laughs> so, <laughs> and by many, by by the time many of you listen to this, that game will be over. So we'll know what yeah. happened there. But I I can respect a player that's good. But the thing is, Mike, uh, if now not when eighty four, uh, he'll be gone. This is it. Thank yeah. the good Lord. This is it. At Tony yeah. Staffieri, um, they find a way. The find a way offense. There he is. <laughs> I knew he was going to show up tonight. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> really? Uh, the find a way offense has made it March, made its March return. Yes. Tony, Tony's right. I read it wrong. The find a way offense has made its March return. How, see, I got it eventually. I got it eventually. However, oh, look at that. The, the crater we have in the middle of the defense is going to be a huge hurdle no matter what non-ACC team we get paired with next week. That is possible, definitely. So, it depends. You never know what type of team we get li- locked up with because uh, not every team has a real big, tall, studly guy. You know, There's a lot of teams that go, that go sometimes four guards, um, a three guard heavy with two forwards, that kind of stuff. So, uh, there's not, there's some teams in college basketball that don't even really go with a traditional center. And technically, against Syracuse, you really don't need to unless he can score. True. But, um, again, I just think it comes down to just being physical, just being tough on the boards. And you got to play like Dolge does. Sometimes he does dumb fouls, but you got to play that hard to, to try to stay in front of somebody. Yeah. And that's, it, that's that physically, I, you know, it's tough. I would say, Tony, too. I would um, – the, the the fouls is what kills me with Chuku. I feel like Chuku could be good if he just doesn't do the – the over-the-back fouls are the ones that kill me. Yeah. Well, the good thing is that between Chuku, Sadibi, and Doja, There's we plenty got 15 of them. Yeah, we got 15 of them. So. That's right. That's right. Um, at our – S Taylor 03. I don't think this team makes the tournament without Frank. Well, I don't know. I think they've made the tournament instrumental in wins over Duke and Ohio State. Oh, I see what he's saying. A lot of people hate him, but I'll miss him next year. Um, look, I don't think there are SU fans that hate on Frank, but I will say for for most of us, I think we're critical of Frank because of the very the very reason we are critical of Frank is what he's done the past two days without Tyus Battle. We've so had, it's potential. It's potential. Absolutely. We know what his potential yeah. is, and we see inconsistency. Right. And it just gets frustrating. Right. Because, you know, as Syracuse fans, you know, a lot of times we don't get a lot of one and dones. And, I mean, there was a little point there where we had a couple guys that would – we'd had a guy that would leave every year a little early or whatever. But for the most part, we get to see players grow from freshmen all the way up. And he's definitely grown and took leaps and bounds as far as his maturity and handle and being coached and 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 that kind of stuff. You know how he was in the doghouse with him and everything. And Beheim, I mean, even when you listen to Beheim talk, 
He's like, well, he's, he's shooting great. He makes them in practice. He's this. I mean, he's he even Beheim is like he's trying to talk him into, hey, dude, we trying know you're sell good. Him. Trying to sell him, yeah. He's trying to sell it to him. He's trying to sell it to Frank. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's a good point. Yeah, he's, he knows that he's good. He's telling you he's what, good. You, he's right. good. But it's, the, it's been the consistency part, and exactly. a lot of times, you know what it is with fans. The inconsistency will get them every time. And some fans just get pissed. They just get pissed. Well, every there's some fans, the fans that well, see they a game like a, I should, last, they lash out is what I should say. They just they well, just 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 say just, vile things. Just because a a person does something one game doesn't mean they can do it or are going to do it every single game. Absolutely. So yeah, and then you don't see that much except for Zion Williamson. Um, well, yeah. um, so okay, we want to give you. Uh, well, I want Joe to actually talk about Selection Sunday quickly. But first, fan feedback was brought to us by none other than my bookie. The first weekend of the NCAA tournament is the greatest betting event of the year. Whether you like filling out a bracket, picking a national champion, predicting first round upsets, or all of the above, my bookie is the perfect home for your March Madness fun. Will Zion Williamson and his teammates cement their legacy at Duke and win a title? Look, I don't write this script. Let's hope not. Can Virginia get past its loss to a 16 seed last year? Well, they just lost to FSU, so I don't know. Maybe they can make a run. And can Kentucky get back in the Final Four? No one really cares. All of us, we all care about SU, and that's it. And that's not in this script, so I add it. If you know the answers, or even if you don't, my bookie is the place to get in on all the action. They have something for everyone, even you multi-bracket guys out there like Joe. My bookie has been in business for years. Their goal is to give you the best customer service in the business. And the best part is they pay out fast when you win, like 48 hours. Boom. That's 48 hours. If you do the math, that's two days. Two days. Boom. Turn around. Wow. Uh, Yeah. That was quick at math. You did that fast. I I know. It's amazing. Bet with the best, (laughs) then kick back and enjoy March Madness while you watch your picks cash and deposit with my bookie today with the promo code QS25 and get that 50% sign up bonus. That's promo code QS25 with my bookie play. You win, you get paid. All right, Joe. So our next show is going to be, obviously, is going to be after Selection Sunday. We'll do the pregame for, or the preview for whatever you want to call it. We'll do the preview for whatever game that uh, we get locked up in. So, right. what do you think? Twenty wins, twenty and thirteen. What What do you think? Uh, like you said, and I've talked about. Um, I've talked about the weak bubble. You've said and talked to me and said that you know we don't really see too much bubble talk. The, there's some little uh, articles here and there on Syracuse.com talking about just kind of given perspective from bracketologists, other people, and they all are kind of saying the same thing. Uh, we didn't do anything to hurt ourselves in the tournament. And so far as the ACC tournament and um, last time I checked again, it's pretty much anywhere between eight or a nine seed is what they're seeing right now. And at yeah, this point in the game, consistent. I mean, it's Friday night and we're eight or a nine seed. I just think that it would be, There'd have to be some craziness to happen in college basketball the next two, two and a half days for us not to, to get in the field. So, I mean, it, it all depends on what you want to see as a, as a fan. If if it goes chalk and the teams that are supposed to win win these conference tournaments, then we'll probably end up an eight or a nine seed. Um, if teams don't want to see us there and they don't want to see us next to that number one uh, as far as the second round game, then uh, if there's a couple upsets, then maybe we, we fall back to where we get maybe a 10. But I don't really see it going too much farther than that. I don't see us pushing back farther than, than a 10 seed. So Which would I just you prefer? hope. What's that? Which would you prefer? Honestly, at this point, uh, I would probably prefer. 10? Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. Sometimes higher numbers are better. I just, I'm sorry. It's just, if you remember that one run that we were talking about with, uh, Finish and those guys when we went and we we came had to come back against Gonzaga and then we beat Virginia. Oh, we made it to the right. Final Four against yeah. uh, North Carolina. Um, oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, that tournament we were a ten seed. Yeah, that's right. We played were. number seven Dayton on the bubble on the bubble too, right? Yep, we were on the bubble. Yeah. We didn't know if we were going to make it. We played yeah. uh, Dayton, who's the seven seed, and won and. We got lucky enough to see Middle Tennessee State as a fifteen seed beat Michigan State. And that was our and, redemption game against Dayton because a couple of years before that we lost to Dayton. 
they took I us think out. they beat us when we had Ty- Tyler Ennis. So, yeah, okay. um, in the second round of that tournament. So, uh, this time around again, or at that time, I should say, you know, a 15 seed beat a two seed. So then we played a 15 seed in the second round and then, you know, the rest is history. So sometimes you need some of those, um, some of those upsets to kind of make your path maybe a little bit, you know, a little bit easier, but, a little bit, um, a little cushion maybe when you're an eight or nine seed, unless you're. UMBC from last year for the first time ever in the tournament. Right. Which the chances of you getting miracle. an upset sure. are right. So if you get an eight or nine seed and you win, you're 99.9% chance of playing a number one seed. So, but 15s and beat twos. So, and again, 11s, 11 seed playing a six seed, they play a three seed. So, and that's happened too. So it's almost like when you get to this point, sometimes I feel like it's better to get 10, 11 seed than the other ones. We've talked about that, but I just don't see, I don't see us falling from the eight, nine seed unless, Hey, you never know. Maybe the committee thinks highly of us and they sneak us up into a seven seed. It could be the surprise of the, yeah, it could be the reverse of what we're thinking. I feel like usually, usually we don't get that kind of stuff from the committee. So no, we don't. I think Syracuse gets, gets the shaft on a lot of things, to be honest with you. Maybe it's just me being a Syracuse fan, but I feel like we get the shaft. So anyway, we'll see yeah. what happens. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're anybody like, if you're anything like me, uh, uh-huh. based upon these past couple of years, it comes Sunday. I'm still going to be nervous. Really? <laughs> I'm still oh, going to be, not yeah, nervous. I, I'm not nervous so. this year, bro. I'm not nervous this year because no, if I think, I think, like you said, it's like a complex. These past couple of years have yeah, gotten me a complex. It and now it's, a complex. you know, knowing that they have the net ranking and we don't really know how they're going to look at it. Again, I still, again, I'm, they, they, we know I'm they sure, award. but once the day comes, you know, when you're watching that show and they got an empty bracket and they're popping up names and they just go through a region and your name's not there, then they go through another region and their name's not there. Like that starts to get a little. Yeah, it does. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, it, you know, there's a possibility, and I'm not promising anything. We may be able to do it live and won't be live to everybody else, though. That's what doesn't make me, like, really animate about doing it. But we may try to do something. But either way, we'll be back either yep. Sunday night or Monday to do the pregame for that. And, um, yeah, that's it. So, uh, yep. you know, a win in the ACC tournament, 20 and 13 to finish up as of now. So, can't be mad. You know, move on, and we'll get. You know, we'll see what we can do in the tournament. Hopefully, Tyus is healthy, and we'll move on from there. I want to thank Tick Splits. Yeah. I want to thank my bookie. I want to thank Armchair All Americans. I want to thank JP Mulligans. Happy hour every Monday through Friday, four to six. Trivia Tuesdays, and of course, dollar off every Labats and um, at every SU game. So go there during the tournament and get all those deals. Uh, anything else? Shop it down barbershop. Yes, thank you, James on guitar. That's it for Joe. I'm Sean. We're out. Hey. Thanks for listening to the Q's Militia Podcast, the fan's voice with Sean and Joe.